A watch that probably doesn't need any introduction is the Rolex Daytona. Perhaps the most sought after watch in the world in 2021 or close to it. And when you're looking at secondary market prices of these things, there's no other way to describe it other than just being completely absurd. Just to kind of give into that idea, today we're gonna be looking at some alternatives and I'm all about just saving up for that very watch that you want the most. But you could put all these watches together, the total value of all these watches that we're gonna be looking at here today is alternatives and it'll equal around the same of the trading price of a Daytona, ceramic Daytona in 2021. So in this video, we're gonna look at a handful of alternatives to the Daytona. A couple things to just mention on the upfront. We're gonna be looking at mechanical options only. So quartz options like say something like the Orient uh, Neo 70s as an example, are not gonna be mentioned in this video. Also, in addition to that, some of these watches are going to maybe pull a little bit from the design style, but also maybe bring something new to the table, even apart from the price that is going to be on the watch. Also, finally, these are gonna be mechanical watches only. So we're gonna be looking at price ranges that probably are going to be a little bit higher, but I also think that makes sense because if you're you know, really lusting after a Daytona, you probably want something at least is something to strive for in some way that at the end of the day is a little bit more obtainable to actually get. Now going in no particular order, the first watch on this list is from Breitling with the B01. Now you could mention the new B09, the pistachio dial, but I don't think that has the same Daytona-esque styling as that of the B01. Now the Premier line has its lineage dating back to the 1940s, and in many ways is a modern reinterpretation of those mid 20th century chronographs. It has a little bit of some racing undertones, but not maybe as much as that of the Daytona. It has this kind of vintage flare, retro flare of a Panda style chronograph. Now, one of the main reasons why I like the Premier B01 is the movement inside. When you're dealing with the B01 movement, this is a manufacturer caliber chronograph movement that's one of the best in the range or under $10,000 that you're gonna find. It's an automatic column wheel, vertical clutch chronograph, also with this particular variant coming with a cost certification as well. Extended power reserve of 70 hours in addition to that. So you're getting a lot of things to like there. The movement is a bit more utilitarian, is available on that exhibition case back to actually view. So still nice to look at. Sizing is a little bit larger at 42 millimeters, but whereas I would say closer to that of a 40 and a half to 41 millimeter case when you actually have this one strapped on. And with Breitling changing quite a bit when it comes to ownership, leadership in the last several years, this Premier B01, I think was almost a window into what was kind of coming from a design perspective. And it seems to be proven true based on what we've been seeing in the past, I would say 12 months. So next up, we have a watch that I would say is a great alternative, not only to the Daytona, but also the Premier B01 with the Hamilton Intramatic or Chrono H line. So I'll just mention both of these together because a lot of them have just similar attributes at the end of the day, one being automatic, one being of course the manual winding variant as well. So I have complete videos looking at these models in the past on the channel. So definitely recommend checking those out. But personally, one of my favorite options for a chronograph in that $2,000 range and I think honestly is one of the best entry level Swiss mechanical chronographs that you're gonna find on the market. You're getting a few things here. For one, the movement inside is a modified Valjoux 7753. So you're getting that horizontal layout of those registers. You're getting a Panda style chronograph, which is in high demand right now. A lot of that coming as a byproduct of just the Daytona craze that's going on at the moment. But Hamilton also has some great history in the development of chronographs, just like Breitling, as we just mentioned with the development of the chronomatics in the late 1960s and transition into the 1970s. They were actually involved in kind of the chronograph races of the late 1960s and certainly need to be considered when talking about the history of this overall pursuit. You're getting extended power reserve on this one, getting above 60 hours for that power reserve, which is great for a entry level Swiss mechanical chronograph. The looks on this are fantastic and the price tag is very tough to beat for a watch of this style. This is, I would say, the go-to for somebody that's looking to get into Swiss mechanical chronographs for the first time and like this overall design DNA. I think this is a great place to start. Now in 2021, we've had our fair share of polarizing releases to say the least. One of those came at the early part of the year with the Zenith Chronomaster Sport. Now this is going to be the most obvious, I would say, comparison or alternative to that of the Daytona because let's be honest, this looks very similar to it. Now, I know I mentioned I didn't wanna get into homage territory. There was a lot of talk about this watch and where it kind of sat. Zenith and Rolex have a very interesting history with, of course, the Daytona housing the El Premier movement for around a decade. 
that I think allows this one to be seen in a different light compared to if any other brand probably did a watch of this type. But I think the reason why the Chronomaster Sport makes a ton of sense to be on this list though, is of course the price, allowing it to be retailing below that of Rolex Daytona and not really making that many sacrifices from there as well. The finishing is great. I think the only part of it that probably is behind that of the Daytona is going to be with the clasp. You're also getting a movement that really, I think, kind of sets the standard for a fully integrated automatic movement. If you're at least talking about the architecture with the El Primero, this does house the 3600 movement inside of here. So you're getting some different types of uh, specifications inside of it. This does have the extended power reserve now reaching 50 hours. You're also getting a one tenth of a second with that central chronograph uh, second hand, which I don't know about in terms of day-to-day -day functionality, maybe being the greatest, but if you're talking about having a cool visual element and also doing something that most chronographs in this range are not doing, this is unique. But overall, despite this one, maybe having some pushback, I think is no doubt a good alternative if you're trying to get into the Daytona and want something from a brand like Zenith, which has a lot of pedigree in the world of automatic chronographs. Now, next up, I think you have to include Omega with the Speedmaster family. Now, I wanna keep this mention a bit more fluid compared to maybe some other mentions on this list. I think you would of course go for the Omega Speedmaster Professional with the new 3861 as a great alternative. Now, does that really have the same design attributes of that of the Daytona? Probably not, uh, but certainly probably going to be the most suitable I would say alternative in terms of actually being a well-known prominent actual legend and icon in the world of watch watchmaking, just like that of the Daytona, maybe even more so. But the one thing I will say is there are so many Speedmasters and this works in your favor when you're talking about getting an alternative to that of the Daytona. You could also look at the CK2998s, which have a variety of different styles that have a bit more of some racing undertones with them. And then you also have the Speedmaster Racings, which candidly are probably the closest thing you're going to get from getting a Daytona in the Omega catalog. But I think you could really put any of the Speedmasters here as being a suitable alternative. Depends how close you wanna to get to that affiliation with the Daytona and that racing undertones, or do you wanna go for another icon that has its own history and a lot going for it as well, just like the Daytona. Now, next up on our list, we have some watches that were also released in 2021 with the Tudor Black Bay Chronos. At the time of releasing these watches at Watches and Wonders, it seemed like these were the most well-received from a mass market perspective. The Tudor Black Bay 58 certainly did get a lot of praise from enthusiasts, but given the more obscure case materials that were being chosen there, I think these were positioned as kind of those flagship new releases from this year from Tudor, and for good reason. They did a lot of things right with these and improving on the current DNA, while also probably leaning a bit more into that of the Daytona and the style elements that are happening there. Now, first off, we're getting a little bit thinner case here at 14.4 millimeters, which I would say is very noticeable when you actually have this one on the wrist. Still not thin by any means, but definitely a large improvement compared to what we've seen in the past. And then also you're getting inside of this one of the best value propositions when you're talking about luxury chronographs on the market with a B01 base inside of this that is also getting a free sprung balance. You're getting COSC certification as well. Lots to like here. And as I mentioned a little bit earlier with the Premier B01, that's a watch that's going to retail much higher than this one. And essentially you're getting a lot of the same movement architecture inside of here. And also a lot of the same benefits that of course come with that movement. You certainly can see some Daytona in these designs without question. And I think a lot of the response here in terms of what we've seen for some appreciation on the secondary market with a trade Trading values of these are kind of a byproduct of this. People want to get into the Daytona and I think this has created a nice other sub outlet to allow yourself to get into it at a much more attainable price while still getting some cool Tudor Black Bay DNA embedded within it. At the end of the day, this is a fantastic value proposition when you're talking about luxury chronographs and if you want to get into that Daytona-esque style. Now next up we have the Tag Heuer Octavia. Now I was kind of conflicted on Carrera or Octavia, but decided to go for the latter just because I felt like the undertones and design approach, it had the motor undertones that I think are very much in alignment with this line while also having the colorway that are very much representative of things that work for the Daytona as well. Now the Octavia in the model family of Tag Heuer in a modern context is probably one of the most revered models in their entire collection and probably is also one of the best windows back into 
I would say, classic Hoyer in his design. Now, back in 2017, there was the release of the 2446 reference with the caliber two inside a fully manufactured caliber from Tag Hoyer that also does kind of look the part in terms of what they're delivering on the front as well. This watch was almost kind of that tipping point in many ways and now has kind of, of course, been sold through and is not really available much anymore, but there are still uh, models available on the secondary market and is a personal favorite of mine. And when it comes to Seiko, I think many people consider their entry-level models as being probably the most beloved when it comes to watch enthusiasts. But there are some select limited editions as well as releases that are, I would say, in alignment with many of their old iconic designs. One being the 6139 of the late 1960s, and I keep referencing the same period. And that's not happening by accident because this period really did set the standard for what automatic chronographs would be in the coming years. Now the model made to really be emblematic of that period was with this limited edition model with the SRQ0. To nine. Now this is a limited edition production model from Seiko to really celebrate the 50 year anniversary of the 6139. In terms of case dimensions on the surface, really similar to what you see with a lot of Seiko models. Going to wear smaller than what that case size might indicate. You're getting some up water resistance with this piece and also getting the column wheel vertical clutch caliber from Seiko, the 8R48 on the inside. Now when it comes to thickness, this is the most thick watch on the list here today at 16 millimeters, so that might be a deal breaker for some. I think the unfortunate reality is many people when thinking of Seiko kind of just chalk them up as a dive watch brand. Don't really think about their just contributions in the world of field watches with the Laurel, the Alpinist, also getting into their world of automatic chronographs as well. But this is a watch that really does pay tribute to a lot of those progressions and contributions of Seiko in the past with their automatic chronographs and doing it in a modern package. All right, guys, now that is my list of alternatives to the Rolex Daytona in 2021. What watch would you go for as an alternative? What are your thoughts also on the Rolex Daytona in 2021 in terms of secondary market value? Is it more insane than ever, or are you kind of a believer that, hey, if the market says that, the market says that, and that's really all you need to worry about. I'd love to see your comments down below. In addition to that, if you did find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Really would appreciate that as well. In addition to that, definitely check out teddybaldasar.com, full authorized dealer of over 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, also offer price match. So if you see one of our watches for cheaper at another authorized dealer, just fill out the form and we'll get in contact with you. And finally, nine out of every $10 that we generate goes right back into the content that we're creating. Also be sure to follow on Instagram as well, see some cool photos of watches and to stay up to date with the content. But guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.